My name's Steph Greedy, I'm 58 and I normally work in a, a local chemist and I worked there for seven years. Well I joined the army when I was quite young and I was 17 and I thought that was the only way out for me. Although I've got a close family now, my mother uh, was physically beaten once a week, you know. It was a ritual, um, her husband or my, my sort of father would sort of make sure that she didn't uh, show the bruises. Sometimes he missed as well, he used to catch her eye, you know. So my mother had a tough life for her, her family were hers. And I often think, had there been women's aid around at that time, this was in the sort of, well, I was born in 1960. And I knew I didn't want to get married, didn't know anything about, the only sexuality I knew was heterosexuality. Which I never questioned, you know, I was a bit of a tomboy, but I never wanted to be male. So I left at 17, joined the army, and I found it really difficult. Because the moment I got there, I felt this absolute dread and loneliness. You know, I, I knew, I knew that there was something missing in my life. And I thought I'd found it going in the army, but it wasn't. And, you know, although my mother wasn't a big union person or never talked about the unions, she always went and voted. And that was her absolute pride and joy. It was, it was like a funny day for my mother. It was like as if that was the only thing that she could do on her own and didn't have to tell anyone about it. I don't know, it was so empowering for her. She never used to tell us you should to vote for, but I could guess from splotch, you know. <laughs> and, uh, I thought I was going to break. And then I went to a place called Middle Wallop. It just so happened we had to stop off at Greenham for a couple of days, which is the American Air Base. And I saw, saw this flag, and it was a red dragon flag, you know. And I said to this guy, I said, uh, what's going on over there? She, you know, he goes, oh, awesome. Lesbians, you know, they all want to be filthy and dirty together. So I started trying to find out about it and I realised then what, it, what they were doing. And then I was absolutely amazed that they came from Cardiff and Wales, that the walk was from here. So I just started looking into it. I cried. I cried because it wasn't talked about in a positive way. It wasn't sort of, it was like, they're our enemy. These women are, are the enemy. I thought I'd got to get out, and they told me I had to give 18 months' notice. I couldn't politicise it. I hadn't read any books or anything like that, you know. And then I became a bus driver. And then I thought I could join a union. And, oh, God, I think the day I became a bus driver, my life changed in lots of ways. I joined a union. I could be active. I could say things. I could read things. I got involved, you know, as the token working class person in the Socialist Workers Party. I read a lot as well. Because I was in the union, I felt so, so empowered, I think. I think I went on a course because I pushed and pushed and pushed for the trade union to send me on any course. And I loved it. I loved that type of education, you know. I sort of really got into the trade union movement. I went on education courses. I did anything I could. They didn't want me to do them, but I did. They used to call me Red Steph. You know, people still question my, my sexuality. I didn't know. I was driving a bus and I used to do, do some of the routes every day. This woman used to get on and she was always really pleased to see me. And I thought, oh, I must be a nice bus driver. And she asked me out for a drink. I was absolutely mortified. I, was, I didn't know what to do myself. So I did meet her for a drink. And it turns out she worked for Women's Aid that on Cruise Road. She was the best thing that ever happened to me because she was really political, she was a feminist, she knew about the green and women. So I, I could share what I felt. That was the first time I shared it, you know. Political stuff and finding out about Greenham, meeting some of the women that went there, reading the books, seeing the photographs, which I'd never seen, you know. So yeah, she was, she was absolutely amazing. Went on many demonstrations. Oh, demonstrations. I love demonstrations. I think it's empowering. I think everyone should go on one. The first one I ever won was the poll tax in London. And I took a load of my bus driver friends, women. There were all these rules and because women are never, ever going to touch that glass ceiling. And because on Cardiff bus, if you went off with having a baby, you used to have to do the driving test when you came back because they thought, thought it altered your brain. These women from Greenham, they did change my life because at that point I knew, I saw it, you know, I tried to read about it, I got into trouble about it and that's the reason I left the army. That's the reason I met this woman, that's the reason I became a bus driver. They were women, they were from Wales and they were from, from where I live. 
where where were they? You know, when I was growing up, was my mother like that? Do you know what I mean? Would she have been like that if she didn't spend most of her life working and, and, and looking after children? So these women have empowered me in a way. I can be mobile with my thoughts and with, with what I've learned because of them. It was a big turning point in my life and I'll never forget that, you know.